really happy to be here with Sonia, Sonia the Gray. And you could tell us a bit about that if you want to, Sonia. Um, so Sonia and I have worked together in various courses. And uh, most recently, um, she's been helping me a lot with the AI uh, course. And so we will definitely talk about AI stuff in this video. Uh, for those of you who are at least mildly interested in it, or at least aren't aren't running screaming the other direction, uh, but even if you are, you might find this interesting if you're willing to, <laughs> to hear us out a little bit. Um, so, Sonia, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. However, it's coming out today is just <laughs> great. But also because people know you, some people know you as Sonia the Gray. You might want to tell us about that too. So, yeah, well. Um... Sonia the Gray started as uh, an insight of feeling like how much of the work I do that's really um, intuitive and wizard-like. Like I just, I had this, somebody asked me, who would you be if you were in a movie? And I took it a little too seriously and like started making a list of every movie character I could ever think of and was struck by, all of a sudden I was like, whoa, Gandalf is everything I do. That It's all there. Uh, it kind of blew my mind and, and gray has always been my favorite color. Um, it's always around me. So I just, I just latched on right away. And it's interesting because I actually feel more in that name than I have ever felt with any of my last names. Like it just feels like me. I wouldn't be surprised if someday I have actually changed it to Sonia Gray. Like that would be very That's plausible. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so doing intuitive work and astrology and chaos magic and just um, helping people with career and purpose and that kind of thing. Um, and then AI came along and it kind of scoops up the, the intuitive elements along with uh, my tech background um, because I've got a good, I don't know, 20, 10, 20 years in tech. Um, and also and those, your love of sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the things come together with AI really well. So it's really interesting because it's, it's kind of the, it's kind of the tech that I always dreamed about of wanting to be involved in tech without having to get into the code in the same way. And I'd not ever really enjoyed code very much. I can do it. I don't love it. And AI kind of changes the playing field a lot with that. So that's part of the reason what really pulled me in. Yeah. That's, and I can, I can attest to you being you can do code because I mean, you've, you've helped me with some spreadsheets. I love spreadsheets. Your magic there is like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that formula is insane. Um, and that's coding too. And uh, yeah. I guess for, for programmers, they would say that's very light coding for it's us. It's very bad well, coding. It's very inefficient oh, okay, very, coding. Yeah. It's very inefficient as far as they're concerned, but yeah. um, it's fantastic. I love it's, spreadsheets. It's amazing. Well, <laughs> for those of you who would like some spreadsheet magic, you can hire Sonia yeah. maybe for that. Um, it's been amazing. So, um, one thing before we get into AI type yeah. topics, um, two things I want to ask you about. One is you, you said chaos magic and you just kind of like chaos magic. You said, <laughs> but a lot of people chaos don't magic. know what that means. Right. <laughs> so tell us more about that. Yeah. Chaos magic is, um, in a lot of ways it's, 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 it's a lot of the elements of spirituality and um manifestation but removed from any connection to religion or um what it what it really is is what you what you really do is you start looking at different religions and different uh processes like wicca or even christianity or you just can look at all of them and you look at the processes that work and you pull them out you kind of look at like how does this work um without the religious overtones and then you put it into practice and i'm probably explaining this really badly somebody who no that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that, that that sounds um, really cool so it's, it all, is. it's almost like a scientific method of it religion is it actually kind of religious ritual <laughs> yeah and yeah. and what's um because for me what i firmly believe is that uh our the physical objects around us act as a conduit from spiritual energy into the real world so there's all this talk a lot of the time in spiritual worlds of like, oh, you need to be able to do it without any uh, crutches, without anything physical. And I've always sort of taken issue with that because um, I believe that if you can use a tool to make it easier and faster and better, then God, just do it. Use the tools that are around us, right? 
So if you're leaning on them so hard that you don't understand the process, then that's a problem. But if you can utilize a tool to make something even cooler or better or whatever, then you may as well do that. So for me, uh, the way that a lot of this chaos, and you can see it, it's all over my office here. <laughs> all this stuff in the background is all spell work type stuff. Um, and the way that it, what it, what it does is it acts as a conduit to pull that energy through and it can be anything, you know, you can do it with your morning tea. It can be like, Hey, I want this tea to help me find clarity today. And you just imagine it bringing you clarity as you drink it in. Um, the part of chaos magic that I'm really bad about, uh, which you might not find surprising because you know, my history with being consistent about things, um, is it's not, you're supposed to like track it and record it and really check on what's working and what's not interesting and be wow. really diligent. Like this is where that yeah. scientific part comes back. Right, right. Um, and I hate that part. It's not very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no, that, but this is such a helpful explanation of it. Um, so, and of course people, this is part of the work you do with people too. You help them with. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of just comes as it just sort of comes in. I don't ever, I, well, that's not true. I guess I have done just this for people specifically. Um, but it tends to come in just automatically. Um, the other cool thing about chaos magic is that it's, um, you, you get to, um, you sort of bring in the belief while you're, you're doing the work and then you let that belief go again. So like, if you were going to do a prayer that has a specific connection to a religion, then you bring in that belief just for a little bit and then you let it go. And it's kind of this really interesting way of sort of touching on all these different elements of, of the world and energy and whatnot. It's really fun. Mm. Well, I, I, I love the idea and I have, as you can see, just renamed my zoom name to George Cow yes. chaos magic with a K. Nice. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> could, be, could be a new brand for me now um for the rest of this interview anyway um so uh two things one thing what, i, I want to talk about kairos a little bit which mm -hmm. leads into the ai because maybe you can explain kairos to people or how you understand it and then how it relates to your uh leaning into the ai at this moment yeah yeah absolutely um so i started at the beginning of this year by uh, and we talked about this in the first interview about Kairos and Kronos time. Kronos being calendar, like schedule, very sort of more rigid. Um, it's a very Saturn energy for anybody who's into astrology. And then Kairos is sort of, um, it's, it's a magical in-between time. It's where time, as we understand it on a clock, doesn't really apply. So that can be flow. It can be those magical moments like at sunset where everything's just kind of perfect and you feel like you're there forever. Um, and I also, I've been using it as a way to think about uh, intuitively guided action because for me, there's a distinction between, um, we, I think I already said this, this one is I'm so fiercely passionate about this piece that there's a distinction between um, following your interest and your impulses and following intuitive guidance, right? Because you can be impulsively like, Hey, I want to go watch Netflix all day. And that's not, um, necessarily intuitively guided. And so really trying to tune into what does this moment want from me? Like what's happening in this moment? Where do I need to be? What do I need to do? Really listening to guides and, um, and my gut and kind of trying to like find what information is coming in for what I need to to work on and what happened very recently with that is I was really looking at um trying to work every day through as much kairos as possible with bringing in the chrono scheduled work as needed right just pause go get the kid that kind of thing um and what I started to realize is that I've been layering expectations of my own around what I think business should be on top of the Kairos instruction. And so like, I would feel that a day was supposed to go, you know, maybe it was supposed to be a rest day, or maybe it was supposed to be, I'm supposed to work on this one thing. And then this extra layer of, of ego business, worry, fear, all of that stuff comes piling on top of it. 
and says, okay, sure, I'll do this one thing, but I'm gonna do it this way in a way that is really driven by all of these nerves and fears and worries. And I wasn't really doing just the one thing that I was being shown. Um, so I've been trying really hard to just do that. And it's extru it's excruciatingly difficult. <laughs> very, and, and by the way, just wanted to, for those who are thinking, what, can, can you use Kairos Corona? I've never heard of that. Um, for those who want to see how the spelling is, that's how you spell yeah. it. Uh, Kronos, K Kairos, uh, Greek words, basically, for different ways of looking at time, yeah. uh, sort of like more linear time versus opportunity type based time. Um, so, okay, now I want to like start getting to the AI stuff. I mean, my interpretation is that because you follow or you aim to follow your intuitive guidance or Kairos time, uh, you've leaned more and more into the AI stuff. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, what what definitely happened was I was following my kind of guidance around stuff and as AI stuff became, started to explode, I just kept being pulled there. And it was, it was all, the, everything was being pulled there. It wasn't just, it wasn't just intuitive guidance of, oh, hey, follow this. It was just all, my whole being went that way. And um, I couldn't stop talking about it. I, I you know, I, I always have something, some input giving me information, something coming through where I have ideas and I have interests. And I also discovered rather quickly that it's a time where I'm extremely willing to uh, put my opinion out into the world in a way that uh, I usually avoid. I usually say like, I'm not going to get into that fight right now about whatever this topic is. And with AI, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to talk about this and this is what I believe. And so there's a lot of pieces that feel like they're falling into alignment, um, which is sort of a weird accidental pun from AI, but I'll move on from that. Uh, but like, <laughs> AI alignment, AI by the alignment. way, for those who don't know, yeah. is, is a big topic these days. How do we align uh, AI's values or direction with humanistic values and direction? But yes, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, I'm not even going to be able to explain this. <laughs> um, and so feeling myself really in a space that makes a lot of sense for me, um, but I don't know what to do with it. And uh, one of the things I actually just sort of as a sidebar, I got really kind of pissed at my guides because these last seven years, it's like, what was all of this? If you're just going to throw me back into technology um, and the kind of the feeling that I got very quickly back was realizing that I would not have pursued the spiritual elements of everything as hard as I did if I wasn't trying to apply them to a business because I like, I just jump into everything. I'm all in when I'm on a topic that's, it's where I go. So I, I wouldn't have been able to be like, I'm a developer and also studying spirituality on the side. It was too conflicting. Um, so that was kind of an interesting, like, oh, all this work to do all of this business building over here was my way of expressing it. Um, it felt like an important noticing because I think there's times where we struggle to push things into, into existence um, in a certain way that like, maybe it's okay that we're trying to push it in that way, even if it ends up being about something else, right? Because that's just how we need to express it in that moment rather than what it ends up being later, you know, like mm. rather than beating ourselves up over this didn't go the way I wanted. It's like, okay, right. but that brought about this piece in you later. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no. And, and, and um, that's, that's great. I, I'm, I'm really curious how, because we started talking about ca chaos magic and now we're talking a bit about AI. Do you see, do, does, does, do, do those two, circles have a Venn diagram for you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know how they wouldn't um, mm -hmm. because AI is a tool. I mean, I heard, I heard it as I was saying it before, right? AI is a tool that is going to enable us to manifest skills and capabilities and stuff that we could not possibly have done before. And it's all going to be about what kind of intention we put into our use of AI. Um, and what kind, you know, the, the ability to kind of connect with it and align with it spiritually at the same time as we use it 
can absolutely have a chaos magic uh, implication because everything has the potential to be, I mean, your cup or your post-it notes or whatever, like your computer, um, every piece of uh, everything around us can be used as chaos magic. So absolutely. Um, and I think even in the way that I explain chaos magic of having it be like a, this conduit or um, catalyst is another word I've used a lot. And AI is absolutely a catalyst for being able to um, tap into expression and abilities in knowledge in a way that we have not easily been able to do without a lot of work and study, right? Um, I don't know if you want to mention how you're using it even for astrology. I know that was an example you brought into our our AI private Facebook group. Um, yeah. Part of the course that I teach on the AI stuff. And, and there's a lot of stuff that's shared in there about how people are using it. Um, but do you want, do you want to mention about that? Yeah. I mean, and I think it's a good example of something you can do regardless of the topic. Um, astrology is just the topic. Um, but what I will do is I will say, Hey, you're my personal astrologer. This works way better with chat GPT four, by the way. Um, the paid plus subscription, right? Um, I will say you're my personal astrologer. And then I will go get my chart from anywhere that can print it as text. So you don't want the physical picture because it can't take pictures. But if you, if you can just get like, you can copy and paste, I think AstroSeq has it. Um, you can copy and paste the text of your chart, which is impossible to read as a human. You look at it, you're like, I don't know what this means. But you paste it and you say, here's my chart. And then you can even do, um, you can get the chart for the current day and paste it in and say, here's today here. Cause it can't check that by itself right now. So you just say, here's today's, here's my chart. Um, tell me what is significant for me right now. Or, um, and you could, or you could get your own transit chart and put that in. If you know what that looks like, you can ask it that because I don't know if it can, it probably can't calculate transits, but, um, so you could put in your own transit chart and say, tell me what this looks like for me today. Um, and it's amazing because what I then do is I follow my intuition with it of, well, that one that it's talking about, none of these are resonating with me, but that one sounds interesting. Tell me more about that one. Or for some reason, Mars stands out right now. Tell me what Mars has for me in today's chart. Like you can just start asking it random questions because that's what an, uh, an astrologer is doing is they're looking at a chart and they're saying, this stands out to me now. Of course, they're also using their education around, um, the, all the things you're supposed to look at, but if you follow your intuition with, with what seems important, you can get some pretty cool results and you can do that with any topic you could put in. Um, I don't know. I don't know another example because right now my brain's spinning on yeah, how astrology no, no. works, but. And, and I'm, no, I'm curious, do you, is this something you could do as a service for somebody else? I, I'm wondering. Probably. I don't want to, but I could, somebody could. <laughs> Somebody could do it. Yeah. Um, what, I, you know, what, uh, because especially if they have even a little bit of understanding of astrology, they could use it to crank out, um, they could use it to crank out output that they could then look, I mean, and also there are chart, there's chart software. I mean, there's kind of an element of like, how useful is this compared to chart software? And I think that's a question people are asking a lot in general about AI is like, here's, here's what AI puts out and here's what this dedicated software puts out, which one's better. Right. And although we can talk, we can talk, quote unquote, have a conversation with, with chat GPT that we can't do with a chart software. I yeah. imagine. And that's why I think um, for me, the interesting piece is that I can use chat GPT for that. And then I can turn around and put in an article that I'm writing and ask it for help developing the article. And, and it's the same tool. So the, and there's another guy out there who's using it for um, data imagery stuff. So like its ability to cross process different types of information is really powerful. Um, and for me, what I'm most interested in right now and why I'm struggling to find kind of the, my footing um, is because I'm kind of looking, I'm trying to look ahead. I'm trying to figure out where is this going? Because I don't think, you know, there's hundreds of th maybe thousands, I don't know, of people at this point selling prompts. 
Um, and in prompts, just, for those who don't know, oh, is yeah. what you put into ChatGPT to get it to output something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's it's this. It's so easy to just use it as a conversation to just, yeah. you know, hey, okay, you can't answer this question for me about astrology. What do you need from me in order to answer this question? Oh, you tell me what you, okay, great. I'll put this in now. So, um, or I need your help with this article. Uh, what, how can you best help me with it? You know, you can, and it's sometimes those answers are great and sometimes they're not great and you still have to use your human mind to evaluate whether or not the chat GPT answers make any sense. Um, so for me, I'm seeing all these people talking about prompting and I'm like, yeah, prompting is a human engagement with a computer. And that's weird to think about, but it's what we're doing is we're having to use our human empathy to engage with something technological. Um, and I don't mean treat it like a, like it, I, I don't believe that it's alive but you treat it as though it were so that you are receiving answers that are in tune with what you're trying to ask. Um, you know, if I ask it really abruptly and harshly about something, it gives me a bullet list back. And if I ask it in a gentle, like kind phrasing, it gives me gentle, kind phrasing back. Like it's it like responds in kind. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, and so that's where empathy comes in because empathy is so much a part of, you know, mirror neurons and us reflecting each other and all of that language. The same thing is happening with ChatGPT or any chat bot. Um, and so for me, I'm looking at that and I'm saying like, here's all these people trying to treat it like a, like an engineering tool. And I, it's, it's past that it's beyond that. And so trying to figure out how people can use it because my biggest passion about this right now is that I believe it's going to um, disrupt industries that we can't even consider easily right now. It's going to get in and be, oh, um, I don't think, I think we're a ways off from it taking anything over, right? I don't think we're going to replace lawyers or anything of, you know, things like that. But I do think that the people who are using it are the people who are going to to progress or go climb the ladders or whatever other phrases we're using these days. Um, they are the ones who are going to do well in their fields. And I think when people aren't using it, it's going to be harder and harder and harder. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out how do I help people use this tool beyond just what's being talked about today? Like, how do we look at it as a collaborator for our work, whether you're an entrepreneur or or in your career, either yeah. way, like we need to be working with it. Totally. Uh, yes. I mean, there's like several analogies for like people say, oh, this is like a calculator, which is not a bad analogy because it's like when the calculator first, came, imagine the calculator first came out, you're like, oh, it's it's going to you know replace our ability to think about numbers and, and, and calculate in our own head. So don't use it, you know, and then the people who are learning how to use it are well, getting more competitive in their field because they're saving time doing it. Or another way of it's, it's sort of like a, like an intern, right? Like an intern is someone you don't just give work to and go, all right, you, I'm going to give whatever you give me to the public. No, you still check it and you still guide it, train it. And the people who say, well, it's too much work working with an intern. I'll just do it myself. Right. Every, every small business owner is like, you know, can't find good help these days. I'll do it. I'll do it myself. It's like, well, but if you learn how to work with an intern, you're actually going to get ahead in the long term because you'll be able to have leadership skills. You'll be able to learn how to train and how to guide and how to empathize and how to correct and all that stuff. Anyway, so um, all right. I want to. I, given that we only have a few minutes left, I want to. Um, yeah, two things I want to tell people about. One is you have a great Substack newsletter. Um, I'll be sure, you know, that, that talks about sort of like the, the AI, how to deal with it well, um, the future of it, et cetera, and, uh, your thoughts about it, your perspectives. I'll put that in the link below, but what else, um, can people reach out to you in terms of what they could, uh, buy from you essentially, <laughs> what kind of services do you have available? You know, and that's, that's a lot of this sort of turning point that I'm in right now, yes, right? Yes, I'm not yes. really sure. So, I mean, I've had people reaching out to me asking if uh, they can hire me to just consult with them about how they might use AI. Um, 
that's kind of my, that's kind of my sweet spot too, is that like, if somebody's stuck or freaked out or not sure, or struggling with, um, including if they're worried about their career and like, how do I use this and whatnot, that just aligns all the pieces that I work with really well. I'm not a bot builder, um, uh, yet someday maybe, but right now I'm not, <laughs> I've toyed with it. Yeah. Um, so, so it's really about, um, but, but also if there's something that someone has heard me talking about in here where they just like, I want to work with yeah. her on that, like, that's just where I'm at right now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I don't I've, think anybody knows these people who are creating AI jobs. I think it's like, do you really know? Like, yeah. I mean, the developers, <laughs> yes, they know they've been right. in this for years, but like the people yeah. who are trying to make up stuff right now, I don't think, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's very much wild west. Yeah, uh, make it up right now. Generative jobs. Um, so, yeah, I I encourage people to go look at your Substack and also to look at your Facebook posts because you do a lot of like up to date, you know, latest insights on this or that, which is really interesting. I find, um, and uh, obviously look at your website. And I think it's I think people will benefit just from spending some time with you and getting your help on stuff. So as I have uh, in various ways. So thank you so much, Sonia. Thanks, George. Thanks.